Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com and what I'm going to do today is show you how to print using various Epson printers with Photoshop CS6. And we start with an image that has been scaled for our needs and sharpened as desired on the final uh, edited size. My particular image is 7.33 inches wide and 11 inches um, and that's just following its aspect ratio of that uh, print. Now I'm going to be printing on letter size paper today which is 11 inches. So generally I want this value to be a little bit smaller but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to leave it that way. But I do want my resolution to be the same as my printer which is 360 for Epson printers. I'm now going to come up here and choose File, Print, and on my computer this likes to open up on the other window and uh, for display. <laughs> and so what I want to do now is I need to set some settings in Photoshop and I need to set some settings in my printer driver. Which one you do um, just kind of a up to you know, debate. This driver uses both. So sometimes you go back and forth. Um, this preview will be the results of what you've chosen in your driver and the settings will impact how your image gets um, printed and as well as um, the information that sends to the printer driver. So let's start with doing our um, Photoshop things first and we'll revisit this uh, at the end. So we want to make sure that we say Photoshop manages colors. We don't want to let the printer do it because we want to specify our printer profile. You choosing the correct printer profile is critical to getting a good print. And so our printer profile must match exactly, not similar, but exactly to our both printer and paper for the best results. And so for this first one we're going to use a R3000 printer. We're going to cover the 3080 and 4900 uh, after this. And we're choosing the premium luster paper. So I'll make that selection. And then for rendering intent, um, Generally for Epson printers I choose relative color metric. Um, for Canon printers I often choose perceptual. But this varies from image to image. So bottom line is if you have any issues, um, you think your color gamut's not uh, covering your image properly, then choose the one that makes uh, sense for you. Generally people use these two, which is why Lightroom only offers those two. There is this option down here to match your print colors and to see gamut warnings, you can see I have a little gamut warning here in the fingernail and to show paper white. Now this is trying to, this is trying to do is somewhat simulate something that's on paper versus what you see on the screen. And your screen is backlit so this is you know not a great approximation because um, your paper is not backlit and the screen is. But it's pretty damn good uh, these days especially if you use a um, GTI personal desktop viewer, which I review my um, uh, printing series uh, page. And in that particular um, device, what it does is it allows you to have light that uh, matches what you have on your display and see your image uh, in a way that really gives you an exact representation choosing these options and comparing. So, um, I'm going to say for most people, you probably want to keep these uh, off unless you're really used to soft proofing, which is what we're doing here. And over here, this won't impact your print. This is just to help you see what the printer profile is doing and, and catch uh, places where maybe you need to adjust your image. Um, for rendering intent, uh, and uh, we also want to make sure we have black point compensation turned on. And then down here, for positioning, we want to center our image and then we can uh, scale our image if we want to. Generally I scale it in Photoshop and don't do any scaling here. However, sometimes like we have right now, our image is pretty close. So if I click scale to fit media, what Photoshop will do is it will look at the printer driver information to determine what is the printable area of the paper, which is showing these lines here saying that it can't print on that area of the paper, which I think is 0 0.12 uh, inches on this particular printer and um, trying to resize your image which is what you would do in Photoshop anyway you'd probably go use its uh, algorithm to resize uh, your image it's scaling it so that it fits within that region 
most people are going to be very satisfied with these results. Really um, detail-oriented people will want to make sure this value is always 360 and do the scaling however method they like to scale elsewhere. But most people will find that doing this is something you almost always want to do and it will give you results that most people will be satisfied with. For the purposes of demo, I'm going to turn it off because I have a reason why I'll discuss later. And then we'll, after we've set all of our Photoshop settings, we come in here to print settings. Oh, we also do our orientation based on what our original is. So I'm going to choose print settings. And this will load my printer driver for the R3000. And the Epson drivers are very similar, so a lot of this will look familiar to you, um, no matter what printer you're using. But there are some slight subtle differences, which is why I cover all of them today. So this is a paper we always want to use photo black ink on. And for our paper, we come in here to photo paper, we choose Epson, uh, or we choose ultra, ultra Premium Photo Paper Luster. All papers here are Epson papers, so we choose Luster. We choose color, choose maximum quality, or we can come in here into options and just slide that over to five. And then we do high speed, which says print when the printer, uh, the head's moving over the paper left and right, that we print over both sides, or both directions. Um, if you turn off this bi-directional printing, then it just prints one way, so it takes your print out twice as long. This paper dries fast. So it's totally fine to leave that on. If you had a paper or had an ink that smeared or dried slowly, then you'd want to turn that off. Common with uh, matte papers, not so much with um, RC papers. So now I want to make sure that my color adjustments are always set to off, no color adjustments. This is very, very important. If we set some, one of these other values here while still setting a paper profile, we'll get double, double um, uh, color uh, management and uh, end up with very inaccurate poor results often. So make sure it's always set to off no color adjustment. Here for source we want to choose sheet and then for size we're gonna choose um, letter size from here and then we can also choose to do borderless. And if we do borderless, what this image is going to do, um, depending on the settings we set, it's going to fill the top and bottom, but still leave the letter bars uh, or the letterbox effect where it doesn't scale out the image to the sides. <coughs> um, I generally like to print my uh, images borderless. This is a personal preference, so let's say OK. And this will tell, tell us some of the areas may smear, a smear depending on the media. This is again for printers that don't do well with uh, bi-directional, or paper doesn't do well with bi-directional. Um, you'll find that uh, you may get a little smearing. Personally, I haven't had that uh, problem with any of today's papers, but um, it's a possibility, so you get a warning. And then whenever you choose borderless, this expansion becomes available, and I generally set it to maximum. Now. When I come over here to page layout, there's another option for adjusting my images. You have one both in Photoshop and in the printer driver. I generally match those. Um, <clears throat> if I do in one, I'll do in the other. And just make sure it fits the page. <clears throat> and now that everything's all set up, there's a dialog over here that confirms everything. I like to take screenshots of these and save them um, with my uh, printer logs so that I know what I did for any given print so I can repeat those results if I need to again in the future. You can also um, save um, your settings uh, for any setup that you've done. <clears throat> but I find that those sometimes erase on their own. I'm not sure why, but I find that sometimes they vanish. So don't rely on that as your only way to reproduce your results. Definitely take notes. Choose OK. <clears throat> and then now you'll see we don't have those white uh, hash marks along the edges anymore. And the reason why is because we chose borderless. If I were to go back in there, turn off borderless, and hit OK. Oops, excuse me. 
one other thing. There's two, two parts of this. Borderless and reduce enlarge. And when I don't do that, we get the hash marks. So if you don't want the, uh, and then it means your image is not going to print from edge to edge. So to get the edge to edge results that we want, come in here and do reduce large, and then I like to do borderless. It takes a second, and then you see we're going to go straight edge to edge. Now we're all set to go, and we can choose print. And I'm not going to print this today, but you get the idea. So now, let's if you're if you're using a four uh, R3000, you're done. Um, if you're using a different printer, please continue on to watch uh, the next video or the next segment. So for this segment, I'm going to fo focus on the 3880, doing the same thing. So if I come up here. I want to go make sure I have Photoshop manage as colors for my paper. I want to make sure I choose for the 3880 profile, not the 3800, the 3880 profile. And I want it to be premium luster photo paper. I want to choose my rendering intent. And again, leave all these things the same as we discussed earlier. When I choose print settings, Again, I want to have luster. I want to have my speed set to 5 for the best quality and bidirectional. No color adjustments, which sometimes you'll see it this way. You may not see that option. You have to make sure you click custom to see no color adjustments. Choose the place where you want to print from. I usually do the sheet feeder personally um, and then the size that you want and if you want to choose borderless click OK will be the option for expansion for page layout we'll choose that reduce and enlarge again and when we do that it gives us two sizes so you notice we get two sizes here I'm going to turn that off. It's only one size. Generally speaking, I always keep these in sync. If I want to do any resizing, I do that in Photoshop or Lightroom. I never let the printer do all that stuff. You're going to have at least a lot of paper and ink um, getting those values wrong. So my advice is just to do that stuff elsewhere and always have those in sync. And then this gives you a high level overview. Click OK. Again, we'll see the results and then we can choose print uh, to print that image. So now I'm going to do one more time uh, for Epson 4900 users. So if you're using a R3000 uh, or a 3880 you can stop the video. So for 4900 users again let's set it to Photoshop manages color and then you'll notice when we come up here, there's two luster options. There's one for photo paper and photo paper 260. 260 is the roll paper. Regular photo paper is the sheet paper. This is actually a 240 GSM. So choose uh, this when you're printing sheets, choose this when you're doing rolls. I'm doing sheets, so I'm gonna choose that option. Everything else stays the same as before. Oh, excuse me, that's my um, 3080 in the background uh, priming its heads. Now I'm going to do my print settings. That little box on the side, if you want to see that, you just got to click show settings here. You'll notice that currently it's set for 260. That's the roll paper. That's not what I want. That's up at the top. You need to come down here to where it says premium photo paper luster. And then I also want to make sure that my quality is set to maximum quality. That's going to set it to 5 and high speed will be on. I want no color adjustments. Just like the other one, you need to make sure you choose custom and no uh, color adjustments. I'm going to choose 
my manual feed because I like to load that paper myself. And then when I do this, when I click printable area, if I want my paper to print centered, I have to make sure I choose the centered option. And generally I like it to go all the way up to the maximum. I'll ignore this. So I say centered maximum. And for this one, I'm not going to do borderless. Um, this printer driver says borderless, but the printer actually doesn't do borderless. And then I'll come through here, choose reduce and large fit to page. We make sure these values are the same. Double check everything here. Click OK. And then we have our result here. Now, when I go down here and I choose print, you're going to get this error message that some clipping will occur. And the reason why is because this printer is going to not really print borderless. It's going to be a little bit white on the top and bottom. Um, so if you don't want that, then you'll choose cancel. Or if you don't care, it'll you hit proceed, it'll clip a little bit of, of your image off the top and bottom. You want to make sure it fits within that region. Then what we do, and that was intentional, I wanted you to see that, that's why I've left us here, is we just scale to fit media. And that should take care of it for us. And it does. And so that concludes uh, my demo. Thanks a lot for watching and visit ronmarkblog.com for discounts and um, more information on how to use various papers and products. Thank you for your support.